The experience of confronting flawed beliefs provides the opportunity for society to refine predominant collective assumptions and for individuals to define their identity. Through language, form and features, the chapters Havoc, A Life in Accidents and The Demon Shark from the autobiography The Boy Behind the Curtain by Tim Winton challenges assumptions regarding trauma, role models and sharks, and the novel The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath challenges assumptions regarding depression and gender roles, despite the obstacles of reluctance to change and denial of personal faults. The individual and collective struggle to reform flawed societal assumptions are exhibited in both texts as well as the rewards of growth and improvement from understanding the flaws in comprehension. The representation of human experiences in literature and especially these texts portray social issues that audiences can empathise with and learn from. Individuals adopt the societal assumptions that trauma and depression are solely detrimental into their identity. However, Winton and Plath's texts challenge these assumptions by recognising growth and improvement as rewards of refining our identity. In the chapter Havoc, Life in Accidents from The Boy Behind the Curtain, the retrospective authorial intrusions exhibit Winton's individual struggle to realise that traumas are rewarding as well as detrimental. By comparing his mindscape to a topography of accidents in this simile, the complexities of navigating trauma and its influences on identity are illustrated. The topographical metaphor demonstrates that overcoming these obstacles results in a better understanding of one's mental landscape and the ways we are influenced by our environment. The marital imagery of the idiom, for better or worse, compares the consequences of traumas to marriage, revealing their paradoxical nature to be both rewarding and challenging. Winton also discusses his individual struggle to accept his father's weakness after his injury in this simile, comparing his father to an infant. Infant has connotations of vulnerability which challenged young Winton's immortalised perception of his father. Confronting his father's mortality was rewarded with a better understanding of the flaws in humanity, thus overcoming the social assumption that traumas are solely detrimental. On the other hand, in The Bell Jar, Plath challenges the assumption that depression is solely detrimental through the motif of the bell jar that symbolises the confinements of depression, which when lifted rewards the main character Esther with an increased capacity for empathy. This simile comparing Esther's individual struggle with depression to war and disease conveys the misery of depression and the idiom a world of our own delineates the loneliness inside the bell jar. However, through the collective pronoun our, Plath highlights that because Joan was in a similar bell jar of depression, Esther was able to form emotional connections with her. During her depression, Esther was cynical and disliked Joan, but by recognising their shared depression, she increased her capacity for empathy and overcame her belief that depression is solely damaging. Plath further explores the assumption that depression is constant in this rhetorical question of inquiring into whether the bell jar will return, in order to represent depression as being lapses of one's life rather than a constant presence, providing moments of clarity and temporary well-being. The stifling distortions reveal how depression manipulates one's perspective, trapping them in a warped version of reality and making it hard to find hope in overcoming depression. In both Havoc, A Life in Accidents from The Boy Behind the Curtain and The Bell Jar, readers are able to learn that there is hope in the hopeless and can empathise with the reward of a deep and rewarding connection to Havoc from individually challenging the social assumptions that form our identity. Through figurative language, these texts challenge flawed societal assumptions that denigrate and marginalise objects of fear. The collective struggle to provoke change is met with much resistance, but once it gains momentum, society can grow and improve. In the chapter The Demon Shark, the motif of the shark is a symbol of fear and the unknown for Australians, which Winton challenges to reveal the flaws in society's irrational fear of sharks. Winton describes how the representation of sharks as dangerous was amplified by films in this allusion to Spielberg's Jaws that sent folks lurching from the cinema and the water in horror. Winton illuminates how the safety of oceans was challenged and the drastic fear of sharks consumed society. The use of zugma and hyperbole inspires the reader to think more deeply about this reaction and why sharks are a symbol of fear. Winton also declares the flaws in the societal beliefs around the savagery of sharks in this metaphor of the blindness of society. He uses irony to reveal and challenge the paradox and casual hypocrisy in perceiving sharks as savages while humans slaughter them. Efforts to change society's treatment of sharks is met with resistance due to the large global population and their diverse knowledge and beliefs. While Winton challenges assumptions about sharks, Plath challenges assumptions about women in the 1950s. The characterization of the main character Esther as an academically gifted maiden pursuing her dreams as a writer provides a feminist representation of women that challenges gender roles of 1950s American society. Plath uses this metaphor of the arrow that shoots off in all directions, like the coloured arrows from the 4th of July rocket, to illuminate the collective struggle women face in challenging society's assumptions that the purpose of women is to support men. Plath continues to convey her feminist beliefs through the symbolism of the drug that removes the memories of the pain of childbirth to represent men's efforts to control women. The metaphor of the corridor and the personified claustrophobic imagery represents the powerless and claustrophobic situations men in society position women in to express to readers the unfairness of gender roles. Winton and Plath's perspectives question social morality by challenging the treatment of sharks and the misogynistic flaws in social norms. And despite social resistance to change and accept personal and social faults, 
These authors and texts contribute to the collective struggles of the animal rights and feminist movements. These texts evoke empathy in readers and promote social movements that create social change in the time following when it was published. Winton and Plath are awarded with small daily changes that can be seen in the achievements of the historic feminist movement, but are yet to be seen in the contemporary movement against the mistreatment of sharks. Both The Boy Behind the Curtain and The Bell Jar explore the individual and collective struggles to confront and refine the social assumptions about trauma, role models, depression, sharks and gender roles that humans have adopted into their identity and that form society's belief system. Society's reluctance to change acts as a barrier to refining social assumptions, but when overcome, the rewards are deeper understanding of the world and ourselves, a larger capacity for empathy, and stronger connections with others. The audience learns that even the most onerous experiences have rewards of growth and improvement, as well as warns readers of adopting social assumptions into their identity without realising their flaws.